Okay, so we're picking back up again with connective tissue. And first we went over the three different kinds of cartilage. And cartilage is interesting in that it has sort of triangular shaped cells and then lots of different fibers and lots of glycoproteins. Ligaments, when we went on to another kind of connective tissue, they connect bones together and are notable in that they don't have very many cells or ground substance at all. They're primarily collagen fibers, and that's why we call it dense, fibrous, connective, if it's in a ligament. There are two kinds of dense fibrous connective tissue. One can be regular, where the collagen fibers are in a predictable wavy pattern, and then there's irregular, where they're kind of crisscrossy and they look a little bit more random. Ligaments are dense, regular, fibrous connective. So are tendons. So let's use our orange highlighter again. Here is a muscle attaching to a bone, and muscles attach to bone via tendons. So they're also dense, fibrous mostly collagen fibers. So tendons and ligaments are both made of dense fibrous connective. Now the dense irregular fibrous connective you find beneath your epidermis. And you might remember that the epidermis is stratified squamous epithelial, and then so that would be kind of this outer layer of the knee if you're looking at it from the side. But then below that, you have a lot of strong collagen fibers that make up the dermis. Those are these little X's. Put those on here in green. This is the dermis. It means skin but it's actually underneath what you think of as your skin. And it's got dense, irregular, fibrous. And then I'll just put CT for connective tissue. The main purpose of that is to resist tearing. As we get older, it starts to break down, and that's why elderly people can sometimes um, very easily cut through their skin uh, because they've lost some of the collagen fibers that make that up. Okay, now let's go even lower to the hypodermis. It only makes sense that we would put that in yellow because in the hypodermis is a lot of fat, and fat is yet another kind of connective tissue. You can see in that word, hypodermis. Hypo means below the skin, and there's lots of fat here. Even in skinny people, there should be some subcutaneous fat, which would be in the hypodermis. And this is adipose connective tissue, and I'll use CT again. Okay, so so far, see if you can uh, guess all of the types of connective tissue that we've gone through. Cartilage, and there's three types of that, hyaline, fibro, and elastic. And then dense, fibrous, connective tissue, and we've looked at two kinds of that, dense, regular, fibrous, which you find in ligaments and tendons, and dense, irregular, fibrous, which you find in the dermis of the skin. And then adipose, connective tissue. Now we'll go down and look at another example of where you find lots of different kinds of connective tissue. This is meant to be like a side view of your intestinal lining, so we're going to use this as review. Do you remember from the page on epithelial that these tall cells that actually touch the food are simple columnar epithelial tissue, ET, like an alien. And then remember, these guys are the goblet cells that make mucus. 
So the foodstuffs are coming through here. This would be what we call the lumen of the GI tract. But then below that is a really loose connective tissue, so the opposite of dense, right? Meaning there's a lot of space in there, and what fills the space is fluid. We call this areolar connective tissue. So it has some collagen fibers. Uh, it has lots of fluid, sometimes blood, and it's jam-packed with white blood cells, especially mast cells. You might remember that mast cells make histamine, which is um, important in inflammation. So if you have food allergies, it's probably white blood cells right below your simple columnar epithelial in your intestine that um, react to whatever that food is. They shouldn't react. They're overreacting, but that is what an allergy is. And then a little sneak preview of what's to come. Beneath the areolar connective tissue in your intestine is a lot of smooth muscle and that's going to help to move the foodstuffs through. Okay, so to go over um, the kinds of connective tissue that we did on this page, I think I'll number them. Got a little messy. First big category, cartilage. Second big category, Dense fibrous. Third big category, adipose. And then to fill it out, bone or osseous connective tissue. And weirdly enough, Blood is considered a connective tissue. If you look at the rules of connective tissue, part of it makes sense. It certainly has fibers. Um, fibrinogen is a can be converted into fibrin that can cause or make a blood clot. And it certainly has ground substance. If you consider all of the uh, minerals and proteins that are in blood that help pull water in. But do you remember up here we noted that most Connective tissue has a scarce blood supply, and that's a little ironic, isn't it, since blood is considered um, a type of connective tissue.